Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is award-winning author Meg Rozov from the United Kingdom. Meg, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. And we're here at the Hungo Apur um, Library, which is a children's library. And um, you are an author of six books, and I'm holding here the first novel you wrote, How I Live Now, which was actually made into a film. Yeah. Um, but before we talk about uh, your career as an author, a uh, writer, you're here for something that is called Literary Arc. I am, yes. Well, I was invited by the British co Consul mm -hmm. um, to come to Armenia. I got an email and they said, would you like to come to a book festival in Armenia? And my first inclination was to say, yes, please. And did you know where Armenia was? Well, I did. I mean, I, I did know where Armenia was, but, but I didn't know very much about Armenia. And I thought, well, this is my big chance. I mean, there are places that you might go anyway, but I might not uh, ever have come to Armenia if I hadn't been invited. So I was incredibly excited. And then I said, well, w what is literary arc? And then I got a, f a questionnaire saying, which animal would you like to be on a literary arc? And um, it actually turned out to be incredibly appropriate because there are writers here from about 10 or 15 different countries. So we are kind of an arc. You are an arc. And yeah. what animal did you choose? Well, I got it. I didn't quite realize it was supposed to be an animal, but in the end, I chose a fish. A fish. And I thought I would swim alongside the arc. <laughs> I like that. You know, yeah. typical kind of <laughs> trying to be creative. Um, and so, what will you be doing while in Armenia? You you will be meeting with local writers. You'll be meeting with the writers from other countries, I presume. Having yeah. Well, we've done that for the last few days, and we've been. Um, taken to all sorts of extraordinary places. Um, we were at Lake Savan yesterday, which is very beautiful, and um, uh, oh God, churches, yeah, sure, and sure, there's ruins, and I mean, just uh, it's it's given me a real sense of um, just the real depth of of, of Armenian um, culture, I think, and and history. Yeah. And it's been interfered with so much over the years, but there's so much that seems to be still there. Yeah, that's right. Um, were, did you have a chance to meet with any uh, Armenian writers? And uh, because, uh, you know, l I always say that we're, we are a nation that loves to read. Yeah. Um, we have a you know a rich uh, literary history, uh, but today unfortunately um, uh, writers um, oftentimes can't get published, or it's it's all vanity publishing. They have difficulty, with, you know, the market is so small they can't make money. Um, it's it's a problem everywhere. I, uh, it's a problem everywhere, but in, in a small country, in a language that not that many people speak, I can yes, and and I talked to three young writers last night. Um, uh, a poet, a literary critic, and a and a novelist, and you know they were asking whether they thought um, whether I thought that they should write in English, and you know it's I mean what do you say to people? It's a difficult life being a writer. There there are always the problem. People are reading less because. Um, of course, there's the internet, and everybody, as you know, we were saying, has a very short attention span. Um, uh, but in a way, you know, you you have to write what's in your heart, uh, and I think you have to use the language that you yeah. that you know. The, you have to use the language of your heart. I mean, there are people who can write in in two or three different languages, but they're quite rare, I mm -hmm. think, um, and. You know, I, I was saying that that there are movements now to um, translate foreign authors more into English, we, and you know, it's about time. Certainly, because um, there are a lot of talented writers, but unfortunately, nobody gets to read. Exactly, what they write because and, and, of and there's a terrible tyranny of the of the English language, as I've discovered while I'm here. We have 15 different countries, and everybody's speaking English. Yeah. And, you know, the tyranny of the English language. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I want to get back to, to, to you. You were born in the States. Yeah. You went to Harvard, and then you moved to England, and then you moved back to the States, and you were in advertising, you were a journalist. I read somewhere politics. Is that Politics? That was totally by mistake. By mistake. I, Most politics are. My mother said she was appalled that I wasn't married. I was, it was 1988. I was, oh, I was third. I was 32, yeah. And you weren't married. And I wasn't married. And, and she said, go volunteer for the um, presidential election. You might meet a nice guy. And because I was a good writer, they actually gave me a job, a proper job. Um, so I ended up as deputy press secretary for New York State. I mean, talk about 
strange, but... From meeting a guy to becoming... Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I did meet a guy, but he wasn't very great. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then you moved to England, and then um, y your novels are uh, for young adults. Yeah. You also have, uh, I think, three picture books that you've yeah. also uh, written. What inspired you to become a writer? And this one here, How I Live Now, and winner of a number of awards, actually. Yeah, what inspired me? I mean, I always thought... I think in a way I was a born writer, but I had that slightly overachieving clever girl syndrome where I thought I could never be a writer because writers were special magic golden people and I wasn't one of them. And also I knew that I was no good at plot and telling a story. And so obviously you can't be a writer if you can't do that. Um, so for years I was on this kind of displacement activity, working in, in publishing and advertising in fields where you had to write, but which didn't require you to tell a story or write a novel. Um, uh, eventually um, I was living in England, I heard that my sister had cancer, and then that was my youngest sister, and then my middle sister also got cancer, and then my youngest sister died, and it was just that carpe diem, you know, that sense that I didn't want to die working in advertising. And not doing what you... Not doing. Having li life pass me by and be doing something I hated. So I thought, okay, I'm going to try. And, yeah, And it the worked. result is this. And, and this also became a, a feature film that yes. was released, I think... About a year ago. About a year ago. Yeah. Uh, how was that feeling? I mean, from from being the person who thought I could, nev you know, I'm not the golden, special, brave writer, to writing a book and then having that book become a feature film. In some ways, it would have been, I would have appreciated it more if it had been my fifth novel. But because it was my first novel, I thought, oh, look, this is so easy. This is just what happens when you write a novel. Of course, it wasn't. Um, and it took 10 years to make the book into a film and to get the funding and all that kind of stuff. And my daughter, who was seven when, I, when, I, when the book was published, um, used to say, Mommy, Mommy, why aren't you more excited? That was the, the, the line that went through those 10 years. Why aren't you more excited? Why aren't you more excited? And I used to say, look, you know, there's so many people involved in making a film. It might turn out good, it might not turn out good. I might like it, I might not like it. So, you know, it's a slight writer's a approach, a slightly depressive approach to anything nice that happens. Oh my God, it'll never happen again. Or, oh my God, this is the best it will ever be. From here, it's all downhill. So, uh, you know, it... So it did you like the film? I did like the film. Okay. I did like the film. I see it as something completely different from the book. Right. Sure. It has a life of its own. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's not even, I mean, in some ways it's not even that close. Right. But, but it was quite thrilling, actually, to go on set and, you know, think, oh my God, they're all here because of me. Yeah. What an incredible feeling. Um, just as a final question, I, I know this is your first trip to Armenia. Hopefully not your last trip. That's what I keep saying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think there's a, a lot that you can still discover about Armenia because of its you know, long, long, long history and, and, and as you said, the interruptions along the way that mm -hmm. happened. Um, and as you said, literature, books these days, uh, I hope, I hope they're not a, a dying thing because uh, for those of us who are avid readers, uh, I think uh, uh, for, for me, many books have saved me at times when I needed yes. them to save me. So what would your advice be to Armenian writers, whether they're in Armenia or abroad, about telling stories or just in writers in general? I mean, how do, how do you tell your story that makes it universal? I mean, I, I, I mean, it, it's easier in a way to to talk about Armenian writers and and uh, you know the 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 curse of m so many writers, um, you know, so many American writers. Nothing's happened to them. You know, their history is is actually fairly comfortable, fairly ordinary. You know, you know here. There's, there's, no ordinary. there's nothing yeah. ordinary here. Yeah. Everything is difficult and, and a bit twisted and, and the history is, goes so deep and it's so thwarted in many ways. And, um, you know, I'm not saying that every, you know, Armenian, young Armenian poet should be writing about the history of Armenia, but you have that in your soul, you know, and, and that's a, a powerful, um, source of light and a powerful source of darkness and whatever you write from there uh, will be heartfelt mm -hmm. you know and you don't have to be writing universally mm -hmm. you don't have to be writing for everyone in the world you have to be writing 
you know, for yourself and, and hope that it connects with a few people. Well, I think that's a, a beautiful sentiment and uh, hopefully people will take that to heart. And we do have so many stories to tell. It's always about the story. So yeah. thank you, uh, Meg Rosa, for the interview. Thank you for coming to Armenia. I hope we will see you again here. Oh, I'll be uh, back. I'll be back. And we'll be following and reading uh, your books. And hopefully they'll be translated into Armenian. Well, yes, I'm hoping. I'm there you hoping. go. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was award-winning novelist from the United Kingdom, Meg Rossoff. Stay with Civil Net.